listening to the Savvy Musician Show with Leah McHenry, and this is your secret weapon for success in the new music industry. Welcome to the Savvy Musician Show. This is CJ Ortiz on the Branding and Mindset Coach here at the Savvy Musician Academy. Delighted once again to be with my lovely counterpart, Leah McHenry. Always a pleasure. How are you doing today? Just doing fine and dandy. <laughs> <laughs> Always a delight. Um, we get excited about talking this, about this sort of stuff because, you know, we know that it's creating uh, value and it's obviously welcomed by the audience. But also, it gives us both a little chance to, you know, the old saying, iron sharpens iron. And so, or I like to say, strike and ignite. You throw a match in my lantern, I throw a match in your lantern, it kind of flames things up. So it's always a pleasure uh, for us to do these things because we get so much time to uh, talk because we're both very, very busy people, don't have a lot of time to do that. So the podcast is a great opportunity. But we get to share this with you guys, and you guys are so awesome and special. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. If you'd like, we would love to hear back from you. You can leave a review with whatever podcast player you're using, you know, if it's uh, Spotify or Stitcher or Google Play or iTunes or whatever you use, please feel free, leave a comment, give us some stars, go to our Facebook pages, group pages, whatever you are, and you can also leave a comment there and tell us your thoughts and what you're getting out of this show or something you'd like for us to cover in the future. We would love to hear from you. Before we get started today, let me share a student spotlight. This is one of our elite students, David Williams. Uh, he has a band called Welter. I had a branding coaching session with him last year. A very talented three-piece band out of Australia with a very unique niche. He writes, hashtag win. Two years ago, Welter's year turnover was around $3,000, most being from gigs and the odd sales. By the end of this financial year, from July 2019 to June 2020, I don't know what he means by, oh, okay, by the time this year ends for him in June 2020, he said, our turnover will be just over $30,000. Thanks to this course, Leah, CJ, and all the coaches plus students, it's taught me to think outside of the box. Through the help of CJ with branding, what a game changer that was. I've also ended up with this no fear attitude, thanks to Steve and Leah, which has led me to making a deal with the CEO of a company to do exclusive house concerts with the wine tasting that the company was paying us to do. This has been a huge success for both parties so far, and I will be expanding this with them for the next year and onwards. Two years ago, even if I'd had the idea, there's no way I would have walked into a CEO's office and said, you need this, which is pretty much what I said. This is the fifth income stream I wanted. Sales are picking up and our ad costs are coming down and our email list is building. That's fantastic. Isn't that great? I love it. What's funny about this is that that's actually what he and I talked about because when we had our branding session, and again, very it's the music you hear is music. It's the kind of stuff you would hear on the radio. Very, very radio mm -hmm. friendly. Very, very encouraging. So I was asking him, you know, just where is he seeing some results? And he started to mention to me. And he said, well, it's all in these wine things, wine events and wine this and wine that. And I said, why all the whining? I mean, where does all this wine thing coming from? He goes, oh, I forgot to mention all of the band members work in the wine industry. Uh -huh. So I said, tell me about your live events. And he said, well, we've played some of these live wine type events. And I said, that's perfect. Target that market. Yes. And so he, they had a song, a very, a very uh, uh, top 40 like song called The Good Life. And I said, hey, man, you know something? Nothing symbolizes the good life like a glass of wine. Yeah. And you, you could be a billionaire or you could be just middle class and the the same glass of wine signifies the same thing. And there's a whole lot of people who love wine and fine food. And for them, the good life is not offensive. 
it's it's something they want to hear. Somebody else of a different class or whatever, you say the good life and they think, ah, oh, get that crap out of here. But no, for that kind of audience, the good life is symbolized by the glass of wine. So I said, you should be targeting these wine events. You should be doing that sort of thing. Totally. And so just to hear him have that confidence to walk into a CEO's office and say, you need Welter to play at your events. That's amazing. So here, again, is somebody taking a market, a music market, which is very competitive if you're competing for radio space. But he divided the market into a particular subculture that's just into fine food and fine wine. Isn't that awesome? That is splendid. It's smart and sustainable, too. Yeah. So he, they can just keep doing this. Yep. I don't see wine going out of style anytime nope. soon. <laughs> nope. So good for you, my friend. Good for you. Um, okay. So today, this is an interesting topic um, because it was kind of brought on by the last podcast episode we did because uh, we we're talking about Leah's building the sister brand, her mythology candles. And she had an experience we're going to talk about here in a little bit, but it highlighted Something that I think think will affect anybody who puts themselves out there online, Leah, and that is being discouraged, being discouraged by the feedback that you get, being discouraged when people don't value you, being discouraged when people are overly critical, when they, as they say, hate on you. You prepare things, you do so much with the right intent, and then people question you. Right. People criticize you. People. And you know how it is online. The, the, the speech is so harsh. The things that people would never say to your yeah. face. Right. Oh. They're more than happy to say online because what are you going to do? Get on a plane, fly 2000 miles and slap their face? No. So they're so free to do that. But with our little tender souls, <laughs> it yeah. can discourage us. And this was even though this is something you've experienced, obviously, umpteen times selling your own music and, of course, marketing even the Savvy Musician Academy, being questioned, being criticized, all of that. This appeared or raised its ugly head again. And In a totally tell me way. a little bit about that. With <laughs> Tell what happened. Yeah, so I'll just say from the outset, I was not prepared when we launched Savvy Musician Academy. I really hadn't had a lot of negative feedback yet because – just thinking, you know, this is also five years ago in my music career. I've come a long way since then as well. Uh, but, it's a, you know, you it's always a vulnerable feeling to put your soul out there to the Internet, even just with your music. Like, that's bad enough. But then if you um, some of you guys, too, have other businesses outside of your music and your your guitar teachers or you just you run some other business and you're learning how to promote it online. In fact, so many people who go through our programs now have the skill sets to promote online. They know how to do advertising. They know how to do funnels. They know how to get email addresses and all of that stuff. So it it, it allows them to put themselves out more as well. So that's, you know, that's what I did with Savvy Musician Academy. I thought, hey, maybe I'll market this little ebook and it will, maybe it would provide another little income for us since I think it could help some people. And then that turned into the full-fledged academy. So at the time I was not prepared for the onslaught of criticism that I was going to get Here's some redheaded chick coming out of nowhere mm. saying she's making money from her music and doing it without touring. And she's got five kids and blah, blah, blah. That's my story. I led with my story. And I mean, of course, I we we were successful right away. Actually, the first month that we launched blew us out of the water. I was like, what? Like it was a pinch me. I had no idea that it was going to do what it did. Right. So we were having to hire people in like month two of the business because it grew so fast. It exploded so fast. Uh, we weren't prepared. But at the same time, so for just as many students as we got enrolled and the business was booming, exploding at the same rate, I was being criticized. My name dragged through the mud, being called every name under the sun. Liar. I don't have integrity I'm a scam artist, snake oil salesman, every name you can think of daily. And I wasn't prepared for that. And at the time, before we were hiring people, it was me reading every single comment, having to address the skepticism or the insults, ban people. You know, we didn't have systems and processes for that kind of thing yet either. And these were all new objections. Every time I saw one of these objections slash insults, I had to quickly learn the difference between, okay, what's an objection in a rude way? 
And what's a flat out insult? Because there's a difference between the two. People who have an objection are actually, they it's actually addressing an, a question they have for themselves. And if I can develop a thicker skin and get over my ego for a second and like not take offense, I can probe a little deeper and ask them, what is their true question? And it also informed me that I could do a better job in my copy in the ads. Because if people are having objections, it means I haven't addressed the questions that would kind of shut that up. And so I started addressing their objections right in our ad copy. And that helped a lot. So, um, for example, the number one question people, you know, or people would blurt out in the comments is, you make all your money from selling these courses, not from music. Oh, I know if I'm going to make money, I'll just start, I'll just tell people how to make money. I won't actually go and do the thing. So that was the number one thing that came up. And so I started addressing it in the ad copy saying, by the way, no, that's not where I make all my money from. Did you know you can have more than one passion in life, people? Mm -hmm that uh, I really am a musician, I really am doing this, and I also teach this. Isn't that cool? And I would also say to them, so um, people can't make money off of teaching other people? Do you also get angry and upset and and tell every piano and guitar teacher that they're also a fraud because they make money off of teaching other people? You better go down the, down the street and tell them that they're all snake oil salesmen too. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I, as you can see, mm-hmm. I learned how to address, and I would, you know, hit the nail on the head. I would address the elephant in the room right in the ad copy. A lot of times I would shut people up, but a lot of people don't read either and they just blurt right. out whatever. So I, I've been facing that for five years now. You'd think I have a really thick skin by now. Guess what? I don't. <laughs> I do. I do. And a lot of times I'll read it and it doesn't affect me at all. Every once in a while, something will get under my skin and I don't know why. I, I All I can say is that At the end of the day, I'm an artist. At the end of the day, I really am sensitive. I really care about people so much. And I I also can make you weary when your name is tarnished. You know, it's my face on the cover of this SMA. It's my story. It's me. And, um, you know, that's something that, you know, my staff, sure, they all take it on too. uh, But at the end of the day, it's my face at, at the moment. And so that can really make one very weary uh, I mean, there's there's forum threads. There's probably hate groups on Facebook sure. against that music. I would not be surprised. I don't go looking for this stuff and I don't want to. Uh, not for, for my mental health, you know. Right. It's not good. But because I understand if somebody isn't hating on you, if you don't have trolls, if you don't have people who are flat out insulted that you're out in the world doing something, you probably don't stand for anything. Right. So I should expect the fact that if I'm standing for something, if I'm helping people, if I'm making a mark on this world, I will have haters. I will have people who don't value me and, in fact, think I'm scum of the earth. Mm. Unfortunately, there's just that many idiots out there who really associate that, you know. And so I'm being vulnerable on this podcast, sharing all of this, because I want to set an example for everybody else that, A, it's part in parcel Is that the expression? Yeah. With putting yourself on the internet, with success comes also, there's this other ugly side where people don't value you. They don't see all the hard work you've put into it. They assume the worst. They will critique and they will try to invalidate you in any way, shape or possible. They'll dig dirt on you. They try to find stuff on you to try and invalidate you and make you completely They want you to go away. They want to discourage you to the point where you never do this ever again. That's the goal. Steal your joy, rob you, and shut you up. Yeah, and that can be, you know, I mean, if you're you're doing this, for example, just in music, it can be other bands. It can be, you know, uh, there's that level of competition. And, um, you know, when you first told me about this, the first thing that hit me was this is envy. And, oh, and I haven't even shared what actually happened recently yet. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the the difference between jealousy and envy, and envy is just a very intense form of jealousy to the degree that you actually take action on it and you try to equalize the balance. And so that il- old illustration of, you know, you have the one girl who is jealous of the cheerleader. And so... It's one thing to talk behind their back, that's jealousy in action, but then when you 
you know, pour acid over the face of the cheerleader <laughs> to try and destroy what she has or what she does or her strength or anything like that. That's the end result of envy. Envy in society is a very damaging thing. We're watching that politically, mm-hmm. you know, socially. We're seeing envy, envy between classes, you know, uh, conflict, racial conflict. But not necessarily, people aren't necessarily engaged. In it. There's a there's the social controllers that are sort of instigating these sorts of things. Right. Because it obviously it empowers government, these kind of stuff. But envy is such a powerful drive in people because they can't figure it out for them. You know, and it so more or less becomes just a reflection. You know, they want to project obviously on you uh, what they struggle with themselves. But what again? You experience this with savvy. What in the world? You're just making candles now, Leah. You're making little, nice, innocent candles. You're not hurting anybody. You're not breaking any laws. <laughs> what? What's? What could anybody possibly have to say about somebody making candles? Oh my gosh. So uh, I, uh, <clears throat> I'll i say this from the outset. I did this to myself because I thought for some reason that this kind of raging criticism is just for some reason musicians. <laughs> and it's not. Yeah. I find out. So, OK, so what happened was um, after my official that the initial launch of Mythology Candles, if you didn't hear the episode, go back one episode and listen to it. Uh, so it's my sister brand, a fantasy inspired candle company for fun. Anyway, I. Of course, for months and months, I've been members of all these different handmade products groups out there, candle making groups and stuff, because I'm I'm there's a there's a great resource uh, where I can search and oh, they're troubleshooting this and oh, wick size and I'm having trouble with my wax is doing something weird. And I've been quietly learning from people for months now. So I've gotten a lot, tremendous amount of value out of it and just getting little answers and stuff. And I think, hey, I don't need to reinvent the wheel. People have solved these problems. I'm, you know, searching it up and blah, blah, blah. And that's always the value of groups. Uh, so after this little launch, and of course, anytime people would launch their new brand, every they they would post about it and everybody celebrates with them. So I'm like, cool, I'm going to post and celebrate too because I've worked so hard on this. These people will understand what kind of work I put into it and they will appreciate it. And while I'm doing it, um, I know I'm probably one of the top, you know, a $3,500 day. Some of them don't make that an entire month. Somebody is going to ask me how I did it. So what I'll do is just share a few tips of what I did. I'm not selling anything. There's no links. There's no nothing like that. I'm just adding value because I want to be nice and because I have value to offer and I've gotten so much from them. So why don't I just give some value back? So that's what I did. I posted about my successful candle launch. I actually gave them a, a quick breakdown of what I did, kind of a short version of the podcast previous to this, a short version of what I did because they can do it too. And I thought, hey, and at the end of the day, the takeaway was in the post, learn online marketing, guys. I will really help you in your businesses. So I post that and the thread went nuts. It went mm. bananas. Of course, everybody's super positive and we're like, wow, this is amazing. And the next thing you know, everybody is asking me, can I hire you to do that? Can you teach me how to do that? Oh, I wish I had online marketing skills. Oh, I never thought of, I never thought of doing, having an email list. How do I get emails? And I'm going, oh my goodness, this is not what I was trying to do here. Mm-hmm. But it started, I mean, I was, it was, it would go into, we're talking hundreds of comments um, of people being flabbergasted that I could do a $3,500 day, which is amazing to me, but it's also like, okay, it's 3,500 bucks. Right. Uh, and, uh, and they're just blown away. And, um, but at, then people start asking how they can do it too. Can I hire, like I said, can I hire you? Can you do a webinar? Do you have a course? Do you, like they're asking me, begging me for this. I said, like after a while, I, I finally posted a comment and I said, hey guys, thank you so much for the support. Again, I'm only, I was just here to share something because I've always, I've learned so much from you. I'm not here to sell anything. I don't even have a link. I got nothing for you. However, there's so much interest here. If If there's enough interest, I could maybe consider doing like a one-off webinar, like a power webinar where I just show you what I did. Uh, But I really don't have time for this, to be honest. I don't. I have too many things that are going on right now. So there would have to be so much demand that I couldn't say no, basically. Then from that point on, it went sideways. People then suddenly, I'm a snake oil salesman. I'm selling some kind of MLM. (laughs) I'm, I'm dishonest. I'm... Um, advertising in a gross way. Someone's like, ew, gross advertising. You know, um, I'm, uh, I lack integrity. 
Uh, this is just a scam. Um, oh, this is why marketers, blah, 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 blah. And it went and it was like it was all started with one little I call it a goblin comment. It was like from a goblin, a little goblin just reared its little ugly head. And it was like one drop of poison, one drop of poison. And the whole thread then attracted more poison and more goblins. And they started going on and on and on. It got to the point I was beside myself. I was a mortified that it even happened. Right. This is going to sound hilarious coming from me, someone with an online business. But I'm going to say they were really mean. They were really. <laughs> I, they, I'm going to, and, and that you won't normally hear me saying stuff like that, but they were really mean. And I saw that, and I was like, I freaking hate people, and I quit. <laughs> I hate people. I quit. I'm never teaching anybody ever again. And there was other people going, what are you talking about? There's nothing wrong with this post. Like, blah, blah, blah. And I ended up deleting my whole post at the end of the night, even though it would have helped more people to to read it and, mm. and just give them some tips. I deleted it. I, my, I was so upset from that. And I think I was shocked because I had assumed that, oh, there's only those kind of trolls and skeptics in the music industry. Right. Other people are more reasonable. No, no. they're no. not. There's a percentage of the entire population that are freaking idiots. Yep. And yep. they uh, okay, and, and we ha let's just say, is there are there people out there scamming who are just trying to profit off of other people and don't actually offer value? Yes, right. there are. They exist, and maybe that's why people are skeptical. But um, it taught me a few things. Number one, I realized that they didn't know my value. They right. didn't know. They had no context to know. Leah knows what she's talking about because she has these other successful businesses. She's done this and she spent a boatload of money from mentors and coaching and programs to get to the point where she was able to give us succinct steps in a valuable post. And we they could have taken that and run with it and actually made way more profit in their their little candle businesses. They didn't know my value. They didn't appreciate where I was coming from. So in that sense, I did it to myself because I mean, but the, the other thing is if I came off and said, hey, I've made millions of dollars and I blah, blah, blah. Well, then I'd right. be bragging and they would also jump down my throat and I'd also be, a scam. you know what I'm saying? Like you, you lose in any scenario right. in this format. So they didn't value me and therefore they didn't value the content. They couldn't see the value in the advice. I mean, there was a lot of people who did, right? Like there was so many people who were grateful, but those trolls that all of a sudden came out and ruined the whole thing, they assumed the worst and it just showed me that sometimes it's amazing. And I, yeah, it's amazing when people do value you, but those, for some reason, the negative always seems to stick out more. Right. And I think that's just human nature. I, I just want people to know that you're, there's nothing wrong with you if that happens to you. Like if you have a, for every 10, 20, 100 fans who say they love your music and you get one person saying that's a piece of crap. Mm. And for some reason that'll ruin our day. Right. I, I mean, we try not to let it ruin our day and we have to we try to go back and go, OK, but well, there's a hundred other people who love my music. That's what I'm supposed to be focusing on. Why does that one stick out and discourage us so much? Yeah, I think one of the things that we do, words obviously only have as much authority over us as we grant them. So, you know, if somebody were to criticize you, say the worst things to you in person, it would obviously affect you. Right. There's no way it doesn't affect you. But if the same words were said by someone who knows you very well, the words would have so much more power than if those words were uttered by a stranger to you. So what's the difference? They're the exact same critical words. Why does the one from somebody who knows you differ from somebody who's a stranger? Simply because you grant you, not mm -hmm. them, you grant more authority to the words of the person who knows you. So the power of a word over you is has as much power as you grant it. So we have to find out why does this negative comment, why does the, the few that say, you know, the bad things, the mean things, why do they have more authority than the people who say the good thing? It's because we, we want it to be comprehensive. <laughs> we want it to be total because in our hearts it's total. Yeah. And you know what? On that note, too, I found myself not appreciating my fans appreciation because it's like a, it's like a mode you have to go into. It's like 
if I, it's hard to let the good comments touch your heart and not also the bad ones. And so right. you put on, you go into a kind of a defensive where you kind of desensitize yourself, but then you're desensitized to all of it. Mm -hmm. So that's the hard part is like, I'm very touched by every elite and SMA testimonial that comes in. They mean a lot to me, but it's difficult for me to let it sink in because I'm also having to shut out all these other and filter all the negative stuff that happens. I'm also having to have a thick skin and not let those ones get to me, but let other ones get to me. It's difficult to do that emotionally. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can, yeah, you, you, you harden yourself to the positive comments and then you're still sensitive to the negative ones. But I, you know, the other thing is that we, especially people like you and I who have followings, sizable ones that, you know, because you're always available, you're always posting. So you hear from, so many people every day. And there's only so many times you can write thank you. <laughs> yep. My pleasure or, hey, that's great. Or, I'm glad you got value out of that. I mean, it just over and over and over and over and over again. I used to say that, you know, if I never heard another compliment for the rest of my life, I think I'd be good. Yeah. You know, there's Whereas, a lot of them. You know, <laughs> I saw this meme the other day. It was um, somebody had wrote, um, it says, you just got 15 likes for the first time on your Facebook post. Then it shows a Google search engine where the person wrote in on the search, how to handle fame. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and, and I, you know, I forget, I honestly do. I, I forget that um, most people don't do what you and I do. So they only deal with things, you know, for the most part on like their personal page. So they're not used to a torrent of, constant feedback, constant results. Con when people say to me, when they ask me about what I do and, and where do I get my gratification from and all this sort of stuff. And, and I said, well, you know, it's, it's hard not to like the gig. I said, because every morning you wake up to people telling you how wonderful you are. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah. I mean, what, you know, there's not a lot of things where you can do that, but you get too used to that. And it can come sometimes as a shock to your system, especially if you're sensitive that, somebody doesn't like what you're doing and they're being actually mean spirit about it. For me, prior to social media, I spent so many years in more academic circles around philosophical and theological discussions. And we would have them in these forums and on blogs and that sort of thing. And you want to talk about ruthless? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, this is kind of before the age of trolls. So it was just very, very intelligent people not afraid to go after your particular position. So there wasn't just insults. It was yeah. literal criticism of ideas. But the, the, the advantage of that is that now coming into the online space, it's a whole lot easier now to deal with run-of-the-mill troll, run-of-the-mill hater who's only been on the Internet since 2009. <laughs> you know? And they're just venting themselves emotionally and to not take it. Seriously. So for those, Leah, I mean, this is, again, this is, and, and the, the negative stuff still stands out to me. And I don't want to pretend that it doesn't. Believe mm -hmm. me, it does. The issue is going to be, you know, how long it takes to recover from mm -hmm. when somebody does this to you. For you, you about a day, right, to get. Well, I was a lot more flustered over that than I normally get in, right. like, if I see a negative Facebook comment, whatever, it's like, I almost roll my eyes most of the time. It's yeah. like, oh gosh, like, oh, oh, so <laughs> have, so original. Like, haven't oh, heard that accusing, before. <laughs> yeah, you just, are you accusing me of making all my money from course. Oh, like, can you? Right. Never, no one's ever accused me of that. So right. you know, it's just like yawn, right? right? A lot of it's yawn. But then this took me by surprise. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it to go that haywire, and I think for me. And, and why I had the reaction like I hate people and I want to quit is because uh, it went it goes so far beyond just like they don't value me. Uh, it, it's which would be just neutral, right? Like they don't care if someone right. didn't care. That's one thing. But then swinging to the other end of the spectrum where it's no, I am trying to take advantage of people. I am malicious or I am especially saying that I am disingenuous or uh, that I have some other, that I don't have integrity. That one got to me because 
that's my life. Like I, any, you ask Steve, you ask anybody, my greatest, mm, not even a pet peeve, it's bigger than that. Let's just say I cannot handle feeling inauthentic or being inauthentic. Like it hurts my feelings living in a rental house because the walls are different color and that's not authentic to who I am. Right. You know, it's like not the color that represents me. I have to have it represent me to feel authentic. And so if if anyone accused me of being not genuine or anything like that, that one really gets under my skin. I think anyway, it ruffled my feathers way more than it should have, but it did teach me a few things. And, and that's also why guys, you got to know, like when you leave reviews for us on this podcast, you write when your wins in the groups, it really carries a lot of weight, especially for me being the face of all of this, having to put up with so much crap. You don't even know half of it, half of it. Also, I get discouraged sometimes from students' lack of results. Like I I take it on myself as though it was my responsibility. Like if I'm just laying all the cards out here, I have a hard time with that. It bums me out when I've seen that people have paid money and they don't log in and they and they don't finish their lessons and they're not really trying very hard. I personally, I take it personal and I sometimes feel a responsibility that was my fault. And then if they say it was my fault and well, I'm not getting any results because blah, 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 like it hurts. And I know in my head, I know logically that's not true. I know logically it's not my responsibility. That's them. And I try to make it very clear in all of our coaching and courses that it is on them. But that doesn't mean at the end of the day that I don't care very deeply that they aren't getting what they look, we're looking for and that they you know, that I, I feel somehow like it was my fault and I know it's not true, but I feel it. And I am just saying it. I'm just saying it. So you, everybody knows I'm human. Don't for a second think that I'm some kind of superwoman. People tell me that and I'm, that's not true. Right. I'm very, very mortal. Hmm. <laughs> well, I can imagine, you know, I mean, come on guys, this is a mother of five kids. She homeschools her kids. How much of a criminal can she be? I mean, be, <laughs> be serious now. It's just it's just a ridiculous statement. And it's the things that people, it's so easy for people to throw around, you know, pejoratives like that and name call and all of that. Of course, they don't want a microscope coming up their backside. <laughs> yeah. They don't want to be judged like that. And so it's the old, you know, he who is without sin casts the first stone. And I think that's for our listeners as we, you know, wrap this up. I I think that's what they have to remember is number one, you got to get used to it. You got to get used to the fact that you're going to get people who don't value what you do. And they've got very harsh things to say about your music. It doesn't matter. You have an obligation to honor the gifts and talents and abilities that are inside of you. That's your commitment. It's You're not doing things for reciprocity. You're not doing things for what you get back. You're doing things because it's your responsibility to the gifts that you have. You have a love for music because you're wired that way. And the best way to honor those precious gifts and talents that you have, those are precious, man. Those, yeah. those are pure. Those are pure. The only way you can honor those is to make them the most that they could ever be. Just yeah. to develop them to the absolute max. That's your only obligation. The fact that people, you know, get off on it and have a great time with it and enjoy it, man, that's icing on the cake. But you've got to honor your gifts. You have to be able to say, I must do this because I can't do otherwise. I have to play music. I have to create. I have to fulfill that artist's calling. And if that calling's eating a hole on the inside of you, you have to answer that. And so, you know, think of it as enemies, you know, as like Lee alluded to that one person as the goblin, little leprechaun, evil leprechauns and evil little goblins. I don't mean to slander all the leprechauns out there if you're listening, <laughs> but all of these evil little urchins that are out there that, you know, they, that they're, they're more bark than they are bite, right? Yeah. And that's all they are. And you have the power to give them authority in their words and give their words power over you. And here's the good part about it. Because you can grant power to their words over you, grant authority to their words over you, that means you can also revoke it. You can take it back. That's right. You can take that authority back. And so having some downtime, you know, after uh, a surprising, challenging session like Leah had in that per- that particular group, 
You may need to take a little time just to regroup, but you're going to get past it. You yeah. know, it's it's going to go out, out of your mind. You don't want to quit. <laughs> you don't, you don't want to, because I understand I've been in that place. I can't tell you how many times, Leah, I have been in that place because people yeah. I feel like, you know, the old verse, it says you're casting pearls before swine. That's exactly it. And to be honest, sometimes, guys, you have to know we really don't have to do any of this. That that one instance yeah. I said to myself, fine. I don't have to do it. I don't have to do this. I won't share anything. I'll go ahead and make another successful business and I won't share yep. one single thing about how I did it or help one single person. Fine. Mm -hmm. And you guys can continue to struggle, do it on your own, and I won't even help you. Right. That's how it can make us feel as creators and coaches and teachers where we're just like, that's it, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it's not, I mean, there's the people who are so amazing and beautiful and they are sharing all that. So I don't want to discredit them right. for right. all the encouragement they do give us. But we do get to the point where it can be really tough to just say, fine, that's it. I'll keep it to myself. Right. And um, so anyways, but we're here on this podcast sharing all of this because I think it's important to talk about it. I think it's, you know, it's important for students to understand that their coaches, their mental health is important too. It's not all about mm -hmm. them. So this is a give and take scenario. There's a win-win scenario. And so yeah. I think it is very healthy to have this discussion and just let people know. And uh, yeah, at the end of the day, this is, I think, the number one thing. I feel like it's an attack on your joy. It's mm -hmm. meant, those comments are meant to steal your joy and taint the process of your journey and of the music itself. And the idea is to get you to stop altogether. Right. And so that's where I think, CJ, you're right. You can't let them, you can't grant them that much authority. If you gets you down, okay, give yourself a couple hours and then right. regroup. Like you said, regroup. Get back to that feeling, that place of feeling good and inspired and happy. Start thinking about the thing again. Stop thinking about the person in the comment and move on. And um, I, we're in the age where people never had to do this at this level or deal with this sort of thing at this level with the Internet. This is all new stuff, uh, but it's not going away. So I think we have to learn how to roll with it. And I also want to say, especially as musicians becoming entrepreneurs and marketers, we do have an advantage over so many other marketers. And the fact mm -hmm. is that we are highly sensitive people. Right. We are Intuitive, so right. in touch we are so in touch with people and psychology and feelings and emotions that we really are unstoppable. When you combine that with marketing knowledge and know-how, you put those two things together and you are such a powerhouse. And it means that we have, you know, an Achilles heel. We have vulnerabilities because of it. But if you know it, it makes it easier. I know that I'm triggered when I don't feel valued. When people don't value me, that makes me want to quit. And I know that's my trigger. And it's probably yeah. your trigger too. When your fans yeah. don't value you, you don't feel valued, it makes you want to quit. Right. Yep. That's and, all, exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. So now that you know. Yeah. Now that you know, you can do something about it. You may fall prey to it, but at least now you, you know, now that you know, you can do something about it. I'll leave everybody with the two secrets of the ages when it comes to this. The greatest wisdom that you'll ever be taught. I know I was taught it and practiced it as a little kid in the schoolyard. And again, this is like beyond Buddha stuff, okay? So this is really, really deep, but I learned it as a kid, these two things. Number one, sticks and stones may break my bones, <laughs> but words can never hurt me. And number two, I'm rubber, you're glue, right? <laughs> or, or you're rubber, I'm glue. What is it? What, I'm rubber, you're glue. Whatever you say bounces off of me. I'm rubber, you're glue. Whatever you say bounces off of me and sticks to you. <laughs> so it just, you know, even in that schoolyard days, you were prepared for trolls, right? Because there was yeah. always going to be a war of words, whether you're a kid or now that you're online, it's the same stupid elementary school stuff. Nobody's grown up. Just on a mass scale. <laughs> <laughs> just on a mass scale. So don't take it seriously, guys. Don't give it any credence, as we all like to say. I will give it all. I tell somebody on the comment. I say, listen, I'm going to give. I'm going to get somebody to write something, and they'll go real wordy and real, real hateful. I mean, but they're kind of. They're not just trying to troll. They're being kind of serious, but they're mean. And I just tell them, I'm going to give your comment all the attention it deserves. Silence. And that's, and that's all I write. <laughs> 
And they're like, okay, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And nothing ever comes. They're like, oh, shoot. Ah. (laughs) It deserves nothing. (laughs) I'm going to steal that. Yeah, please do. Anyway, okay, guys, listen, um, please, again, as we said at the outset, please do review for the podcast. And, so we don't um, quit. So we don't quit and get all <laughs> <Yeah>. hurt and discouraged. <laughs> and uh, listen, if you're just getting started out with the Savvy Musician Academy, this podcast, I want to encourage you. You might be interested in the, in, even if you're not, you know, for our elite students love what I'm about to say about the Inner Circle membership. But uh, this is an awesome program. It's just $19.99 a month and you get a free, just full on newsletter slash magazine that's downloadable with articles on the latest news and marketing and social media, uh, articles on how to's. You get mindset motivation stuff. You get tips. You get tools. You get recommended books of the month. You get special student spotlights. Awesome to get introduced to marketing and reinforce your marketing knowledge and skills and keep you up to date if you're more elite. And then also you get a free bonus uh, video mini course each month on a particular topic. It's really, really awesome. And there's also a downloadable audio version, which I read myself. If you'd like that beautiful, sexy voice, the beautiful, sexy voice. And so you get all of that for just $19.99 a month. You can sign up today at SavvyMusicianAcademy.com forward slash inner circle. Leah, always a pleasure. I hope this was helpful for you guys. And uh, yeah, (laughs) see you in the next one. This episode was sponsored by the Super Fan System Elite Program here at Savvy Musician Academy. If you are looking to scale your existing music business and you're looking to get into advanced digital marketing, such as email marketing, funnels, e-commerce, Facebook ads, and more, and you're looking to build a real profitable online music business, book a call with our team at www.callsma.com. We would love to speak with you for about 30 minutes and see how we can help you. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast for more episodes and we'll see you next time.